Tonight, we show you how to 416 your MR556. James sweet talks a woman, and we blow up some cardboard men. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Reckless Spending with the 1911 Syndicate. Today, we present you with an opportunity to liquidate your child's college fund. Why spend your hard-earned money to send your kid to college just to listen to some hippie teacher when instead you could spend it on safety, security, and a spectacular good time? Some of you might receive some pushback from your wife on purchasing this rifle. Correction, making this investment, which is why we created this instructional video. A completely made up statistic is that 71% of our viewers have wives. Another recent fake study found out that 95% of men want an HK416 clone, but your wife says no. So allow us to present you with some valid excuses. Honey, this isn't just another AR. It's pissed and driven. Inflation. There's been reports of prowlers. Dinner don't take no shit. Darling, I know you wanted to go to Germany, but I blew the budget on this and brought Germany back home for both of us. Okay, everyone, welcome to the freaking show. Good to be here. It's great to be here. You know, and it's good to be here. Uh, we're in North Carolina, for those of you uh, tuning in to the series for week number two here. Uh, last week we were talking about the M27. This week we'll be talking about the MR556, which it will be, um, you know, obviously it's not an M27. It will be sort of a civilian clone, if you will, of something like an M27 or the, of course, very famous 416, which is, of course, related to the M27. Uh, so we're going to basically be taking a look at not so much a gun review today, but hey, look, that's something resembling a stock. Uh, well, really, it is a stock. It is a stock. Um, yeah. MR556. <laughs> and we're going to be kind of exploring the... Some people will keep their guns this way and some people are gonna go, man, I wanna go more of like the 416 route. So we're gonna kind of be exploring, okay, how do you go about doing a conversion on something like this? We've got a couple different shorties we'll be looking yep. at in addition to the full size one. Um, we will have a bit of a, a spicy little shooting, it's spicy in a quite literal sense, uh, shooting competition today. So I would highly recommend you stick around to the end of the video to find out who wins that glorious moment. Pretty clear. Well, it's very up for debate, everyone. So we shall see. Before we get into it, Chris, let me ask you something. Yeah. Do you value your hips? I value my hips highly. How do you take care of them? I take care of my hips with Segera. Mm. This right here. What do you take care of your hips with? The same damn shit, and you know that. Thanks for the lead-in, though. Um, we thank them for sponsoring the video today. We've done a couple videos before they ever sponsored the channel. We did a couple videos on their um, battle wagon, which emissary. is their battle belt. Yeah, emissary, kind of their, their daily, and then their battle wagon for the... Um, well, for the battle, you know, for, the for, for, for battle time. <laughs> in a wagon. <laughs> um, yeah, if you happen to be in <laughs> colonial times and, uh, you know. Anyway, Juan, sorry for the ad read here. Um, there's a code, 1911 Syndicate, saves you 10% off. Check it out. We got the reviews linked below. You guys scope that out. Good dudes. We appreciate their support. Okay, folks, here's what we're going to do for today's little competition that we're going to run. These three men will engage in a thrilling battle where the loser will be 
shamed, condemned to hell, yep. or, or whatever you want, or something less serious. Um, I don't know why you got to go that dark, but I don't know. It's it's it, there's more on the line. Um, Not for you. But, well, no, it's it's a predetermined outcome yeah. at this point anyway. But um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start from the vehicle. We'll show you guys the video with the course fire. We'll start from the vehicle. Okay. You will engage one round on each steel target, four steel targets. So ding, 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 ding. At which point you will sprint or walk if you so choose, um, or skip up to the top of the tower where you will have to engage one paper target with one pound of tannerite on it. Okay. There'll be a big boom and we will track the time on this. It's misses don't matter. It simply matters. Ding, 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 ding. Boom. Okay. That's your time. Okay. Here we go. Let's go. Shooter ready? Stand by. That was a hit, right? Yeah. Yep. I don't think it's shit zeroed anymore. <laughs> two, two rounds left. Total time, 77.04. <laughs> My zero is fucked. What was that, about 32 rounds? It was close. I was at 28. <laughs> 28 rounds. What was it, 7704? 7, All right, let's get into it. We're back with James, the majestic freaking James here today, joining us. As always. Yeah, you do know you're a majestic guy, right? Yeah, you guys remind me quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, well so how can you internet. look in the mirror and not be reminded every morning? Do you ever look in the mirror and you're just like, damn. <laughs> Damn, God got it right. No? no. You're yeah. a liar. No. You're a liar. Come on, man. Too, Come hum on. too humble for that. Too Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most humble guy you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so why don't we do this? So there, there, there's tons of discussion of, you know, why can't I get a 416? Why can't I get an MP7? And then we enter this territory of MR556. And I think there's a lot of people that we did kind of an in-depth video last year called Why HK Hates Us. You guys can go watch if you want the, the longer explanation. But I guess it, it, the MR really ties into that conversation of why can't, why am I getting an MR? Why can't I get certain things in the US? Sure. There are specific German government regulations relating to what they consider weapons of war. Uh, being able to be exported out of the country from a company that manufactures weapons in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, so that prevents H&K USA from importing in those weapons that, of course, everybody sees the videos, we're having, we're having a grand time with, and, and they say, why well, can't I have it? That's why. It's not H&K USA failing to recognize a commercial market sure. potential for these weapons. It's, uh, hey, we've got to work within the the constraints and restraints that are provided um, to us. Um, from so the German government. From the German government. Okay. So they still want to respond to that obvious commercial desire to have such. Um, so when the HK416 and 417 were released, um, H&K then created a commercial version in the MR556A1 and the MR762A1. Mm -hmm. These rifles, the MR standing for match rifle, are designed in a way to get around the weapons of war concept to not be an assault rifle. It's not a machine gun. It's intended to be a match rifle, a rifle that you come out to the range here and enjoy target shooting with or, or go into you know, three-gun right competition, yeah. that type of, uh, of thing. So we see a 
similar um, overall concept with some minor changes in order to make it U.S. importable within those regulations. Mm -hmm. And okay. something I always remind people when they go down the like, they hate HK, us. Like, do you think HK doesn't want to sell you guns? Yeah. Do you think they're in this for charity? It's like, of course they want to sell you guns. If they're not giving you a civilian yada, 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 it's like, well, it's probably because they can't. Sure. Okay, so everyone, everyone relax a little bit. Um, so I guess when it comes to MR 556 and, and 416, which would you know be its uh, you know bigger brother, um, what is the difference? Yeah, so we have an MR 556A1 uh, here um, that H&K is kindly brought for us to shoot for this video. And this is the configuration that you would receive um, if you purchase this now. Obviously mm -hmm. the optic and optic mount is an addition on here. Uh, it now comes with a different magazine. These are steel magazines, but overall this is the configuration. And you know, for all intended purposes, this is an HK416. Um, it does not have the full auto capability, obviously for, for um, you know, clear reasons. And it has uh, uh, auto um, blocks within the receiver that prevents you from putting a full auto bolt carrier and converting this over to full auto in a in an easy manner all ATF regulated type changes mm -hmm. um, but besides that and the lack of a uh, a chrome line barrel the MR series does not have a chrome lining because chrome lining actually negatively affects the match grade capability mm -hmm. of a rifle and that's what this is all about yeah. um, besides that change this is pretty much an HK416. So yep. your ability to have something as similar um, to that is is really kind of right out of the box from, from H&K. Yeah, and um, we'll probably spend the bulk of the video talking about kind of the shorties and the conversion process and you know just some kit lists for fun and, and things like that. I mean, look, obviously you're HK Armor and you deal with this stuff all the time. Like in terms of people that are getting an MR556, we were talking about this this earlier, but like, What's kind of a educated guess on like percentage of people who are going, yeah, I want a full length, uh, you know, intermediate range carbine versus like, give me the 416 CQB kind of vibe. Sure. You know, of course I don't have any kind of quantifiable nah. data, but from, you know, the circles that I run in and, uh, and can observe, you see obviously a great proportion that just like to take the standard rifle as it is, you know, add an optic to it and they're, they're good to go. And then you see uh, another range that, Hey, they really want that original, you know, 416 look and style. Um, and now what we're seeing more are the guys who want the new hotness, the, you know, the A5 variant yeah. with the raw 8,000 look and adjustable gas regulator. And so they're looking for as close to clone correct as they can for the latest example. And depending on your imagination and how much you want to spend on your overall project, you have the ability to do that with, you know, the base rifle as it is. Yeah. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Cause, um, it, and really, if for some reason <clears throat> later in the series, we'll be doing a video on the M110 A1 SDMR, mm -hmm. to which I am shocked that I'm remembering Good job, dude. that yeah. entire an acronym, to be honest with you. But um, if you're like, hey, that that's really cool, because it is really cool. Um, if you're like, that's really cool, but can I do a 5.56? You can get pretty damn close to an SDMR, but it, clearly the caliber is wrong, but it's like, you get pretty damn close with that, you sure, know? So sure. you, you can do some really cool hey, stuff with these things. Build this out as a DMR, uh, as an M38 in the US Marine Corps. You can build it as an M27 variant. You can cut it down as a shorty. There's lots of different things you can do with it. Um, but also within the US spec, this is a pretty good success story for H&K's expansion of their US production right. facility. Um, so the weapon itself is, is considered manufactured here in the U.S. and they do that through a number of ways. Um, the barrels actually come in from Germany as barrel blanks huh. and are finished at HK USA. Mm -hmm. um, the receivers, uh, lower receivers, are actually forged here and then they uh, they manufacture the flash hider, the um, disconnector, and the hammer here in the U.S. All the other components are made in Germany. Mm -hmm. They're brought over and then the entire thing is assembled, test fired, proofed, here at h &K USA. Um, so great to have kind of a, a partnership between h &K Germany and h &K USA to, again, expand this capability to the U.S. market. 
if they didn't have that capability here, we probably wouldn't see this weapon at all, or maybe not as, 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 as many quantities as we can, because it takes some of the pressure yeah. off of the German Import, production yeah. line in order yeah. to, to do that here. So that, that's a great start for H and K USA and it shows continued expansion for hopefully future models that we're all going to be excited to see. Mm -hmm. Very cool. You want to share anything with us that you know, like proprietary information? Or? I absolutely would not. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, on to the next section. Stand by. What am I at? 65.58. That was close. That was getting close. Hey, you can see the Tannerite poop, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you were hitting it. You were yep. Hitting it. Dude, I hit it multiple times. I could yeah. see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The third round, I saw poop of white. Big chunks coming off. So that, tan that Tannerite, we had, uh, it was a little wet inside. It was That's why it's wet. I still beat Jake, so it was getting close. It's getting close. Okay, everyone, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, um, one, we would love to sell you a house and preferably one that is $5 million. <laughs> um, that would be great. Full 3%. That's how we work around what here. What would be that commission? Like um, uh, 100 grand? Th $150,000. There you go. Um, but that would help us out a lot. You know, that's all <laughs> I'm saying. 150 grand would help out right now. Um, Patreon, we've got that. If you guys uh, ever want to just donate to the cause, get some BTS content, all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, yeah, go check out the site. Just learn about what we do all right let's talk about how we go from full length base gun to the shorty so the other shorty we'll be talking about is is, is our buddy kevin's and um he was the one that kind of sold me on this thing because he's just like man it's like the softest shooting gun ever and 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 then we got this trip lined up and i'm like well it sounds like a good excuse to do an mr556 so here we find ourselves really so if we go i'm gonna hold this one up chris you hold up the the full length yep so there's quite a process. The biggest thing right. is going to be from here forward and how we go about that. Help yeah. us out. So, I mean, again, it really depends on what you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. and in this case, what we're referring to is the shorter barrel model. The 10 and 10.4 inch uh, barrel length is the common one that most of the people want to do for the, you know, the mill spec uh, relation. So what you're needing to do is take your H and K barrel that comes with your MR 556A1, remove it, and then have it cut back and re-threaded in order to meet that length. Um, or you're gonna find some aftermarket barrel. Those are two options. You know, one's probably, you know, the out of the box, a little cheaper, easier solution. The other one takes a little bit more time involved. But what I always like to remind people of is if there's one thing that H and K does better than anything else, it's the barrels. Mm -hmm. yeah. The quality of the steel, the cold hammer forging um, procedure, it's like taking your barrel out and putting some aftermarket thing that who knows is made of Chinese pop metal. It, it would be like taking the Porsche engine out and putting in, I don't know. Prius. Yeah, you name what it is. It just doesn't make sense to me. So my recommendation is always to, let's chop. go ahead and remove the barrel, chop it, cut it down. And then when you change your barrel length, that's going to require you to change your gas block. Mm -hmm. um, the standard length one here for the 16 and a half inch has a different gas block than the optimized one for a 10 inch. So now we have to source the gas block for it. We're going to go ahead and install that on, on the, uh, 
on the barrel. We'll retorque spec everything for that. Put on whatever flash hotter that you may want. If you've got some kind of adapter for a suppressor, we can do that. And then it's every other accessory that you might want yeah. to add to it. Maybe you want to upgrade to a Geisley trigger. Maybe you want to change out your, your buffer tube, put a different stock on there. There's lots of different things that can be done, um, but really most of the time it starts with the barrel. barrel. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give a real, um, I'll take it one step further and give them kind of a step-by-step, -step, sure. um, which is, so look, I acquired the base gun, which is basically, basically that. Next thing, which is tricky, um, to even get the damn barrel out, they're special tools. Sure. Right? Uh, which means I sent my gun to you. Sure. Right? Now, that's a little bit of a shameless plug, but also a fact. Sure. I sent my gun to you because you've got the tool to take the barrel out. Yeah. At that point, you held onto the base gun. We sent the barrel to Alex over at Trajectory Arms. He cut it down to 10.4, at which point it went back to you. Now, one slight quirk. Um, so, we've got like two shims in order to get my... Uh, muzzle device on. So based on the muzzle device and suppressor, and if you call up Alex over at Trajectory, he, he maybe steer the conversation a little more clearly than me. You may even consider going like 10.45 to 10.5 to allow that the space. ever so slight of a space. You don't have to deal with shims and, and all that kind sure. of stuff. Because the gassing, I'm assuming 10.4 to 10.5, like who cares at that point, sure. right? It's more of a concern with what kind of flash hider and muzzle yes. device and suppress you may use. Yeah. And, and that may be required, may not, but I highly encourage you to already know ahead of time yeah. Yeah. what you want the setup to be. Yeah. And then whether you're talking about where you sent your barrel to get cut or where you sent the, the weapon to get assembled, knowing that you can trust who you have. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, shameless plug for myself, there's a reason why you go to an HK certified armorer because he has the knowledge and tools and experience. There's a lot of guys out there that think, oh, well, I know how to build an AR. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately this, though it looks like an AR, is not an AR. The yeah, tooling really that you have to build, you know, your Brownells parts kit or whatever is not the same tooling that you need from here, especially if you want to get the torque specs correct to make sure that you don't have a problem down the, right. down the line. No. Yeah, and so basically my barrel got cut by Alex, barrel gets shipped back to you. In the meantime, all of that's happening, I sourced the 10.4 gas block, which I think you can find fairly yep. easily. They don't seem that hard to find, actually. Um, you might pay out the ass for one, but it's like, you can find them. Sure. Okay. Um, so it's like, and and then you're gonna need to figure out your handguard, yep. right? So it's like, um, Kevin's got a, you know, Geisley M-Lock handguard, the slimline one. I wanna go kind of classic with the quad rail. So it's like, you really need, really what you're looking at is your barrel chop, taken out, installed, that whole thing, gas block handguard. Like that's your big first three steps right there is and, figuring out your upper. And I highly encourage any of the fans out there that are watching, if they've got questions, you know, reach out to us, give me a call. Yeah. I'm happy to talk you through <clears throat> the process so we can understand exactly what you want mm -hmm. and the end results so you don't waste time and money right. going down the wrong path and finding out later that, oh crap, I didn't get what I needed. Yeah, yeah cause there's different handguards based on, hey, are you doing, you know, a A5s and then there's adjustable gas blocks and it's like, this can be a rabbit hole. A lot guys. to consider. This, yeah. this really can be kind of a rabbit hole. And uh, I'd be the first to tell you, you just got to understand going into something like this, you're going to drop some coin uh, on one of these. Like you, you're, you know, this isn't like a cheap setup to do, but I mean, it's, it's German cool. firearms. Like what would what, you think this was the budget gun? Like, no, I mean, c come on, you know, figure it out. So I guess with that said, we'll start talking about the builds. Yeah. Smoked us. 4521 smoked us. So it took a minute to get used to the holdover. Yeah. 
but the angle from that side of the car to the right steel, yeah, it just like disappeared on me. That's bladed, yeah. And I'm like, am I on the target? Yeah. yeah. I think if it had been painted fully, maybe I don't know. Anyway, I clearly had a hard time. Well, you well, everyone smoked me, but you also smoked Chris. Good. So, That's congratulations good. on your freaking win, You're guy. Okay, everyone, let's talk about these couple um, converted guns that we have out here. So we'll really just kind of go through uh, kit list builds, um, how these different guns are kitted out. So they both, first of all, these are both uh, cut down to 10.4. Um, both exact same cam. Yeah, we need to talk about that a little bit. So the when we were first talking about doing the conversion, you're just like low back pressure. Big key to this. Um, I started with a different can tried that because I had it sitting in the safe, wanted to try it out. And um, a higher back pressure can, not compatible. Yeah. Not compatible. Um, just ripping the gun. You can just tell like this gun's gonna get ripped apart. And the recoil's violent, the gas is, is harsh. Like you need a very low back pressure can. Um, kind of by default, the, the Hux Flow 556K winds up being a logical suppressor choice. I'd say, hey, it does some things well, it doesn't do some things well. Obviously, um, Ejection pattern super clean yeah. on this because the lack of back pressure. Gun runs very clean even after range days. Like I mean, really, there's no carbon that's blowing back in the system. Which of course, I guess maybe just for those who don't get it, maybe you speak to the short stroke piston and kind of the the benefit yeah. of that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, suppressed. The, the short stroke system is going to run cleaner um, because it's not imparting hot carbon fouling back into the action um, because the gas that's diverted up into the gas block doesn't go through a gas impingement system to push the bolt back to the rear. It just pushes a piston, which pushes an operating rod, which pushes the anvil on the on the carrier. So cleaner, cooler, less wear on the parts. You're always gonna get more carbon back from mounting suppressor. So not having the additional carbon from the operating system mm -hmm. just means it's gonna be longer. Yeah. I think what you, you gotta have a trade off with once you pick a, a, a build like this. So obviously you picked a compact suppressor to go with a compact barrel. So you're not gonna get, regardless of what weapon, the shorty cans aren't gonna have as great sound suppression as, mm -hmm. a, as a longer can. Um, and you really have to think about what are you overall looking to do? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to be Hollywood quiet no. um, with your suppressor, no. Most of these builds, they're looking for something that can be maneuverable in you know, short range engagements through CQB where I need just enough sound suppression and fl flash suppression and concussion reduction to because I'm not going to be wearing hearing protection yeah. most likely. Yeah. And so this fits that bill, um, but you obviously need to do your homework. You yeah. Need to find out what available options are out there mm -hmm. and how it may work with this type of setup. Yeah. Now I found a really hmm. quirky thing, um, which is, and I've shown both of, of you this because I'm like I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on right now. So I can't quite uh, make sense of it, but definitely with the the Hux um, muzzle device, make sure that thing is torqued on properly and I would recommend rock set that thing on. On day one of shooting it, I would make a semi-regular effort to uh, bring an oven mitt or something with you and just see, is anything backing off here? Um, on day one for me shooting this at the end of the day, basically the muzzle device had unthread. I go to take the can off and I'm like, boy, this sure is easy. And it's like, well, yeah, your whole muzzle device is, is threading off. Um, so just make sure that thing's tightened down properly. And then a little bit of ammo sensitivity in relation to the suppressor. So M193 is what we wound up finding to be the culprit of some giant fireballs coming out of the end of my gun. And it was interesting because after like a mag and a half, there would be like a detonation like a cannon going off and it's a it's an audible boom and then uh, a, a giant flash and a, a, at that point once it's hot it's like you're getting you're getting the booms and so I put a little bit of that on the cam but also once um, we swapped to different ammo that's just a little cleaner a little less hot um, that got uh, sorted out but just be aware hey if you're to do something like this and you're like what is going on here with this flash like M193 which is very common ammo could be the culprit of your problem. So just, again, quirky things that you find out through actually running your gear. Down the suppressor, because this flow through has something that's been coined as gas stacking. Mm -hmm. So gas will kind of build up in the suppressor after several rounds. And then one of those rounds will ignite it. So yeah. you get like four rounds that are normal and then a fifth round that kind of 
little oomph to it. It's called gas stacking. Mm -hmm. Just kind of learned about it recently. So that could be the culprit yeah. as well. Uh, also happens after Taco Bell. So, so, you know, what's the difference? You know what that's about, don't you? Oh, you, you are going to You're going to tell me You that? brought it up. You're the one that on, on Sundays when I'm taking him to the airport, he's like, he's like, hit the, hit the Chalupa. And I'm like, bro, come on. Man. Dude, it's a beefy five-layer burrito, bro. I got to be in the car with you for like 45 minutes to go to the yeah, airport. Well. We don't need to be doing no five-bean You're no walk in the park either, brother. Burritos. So Come on. Uh, hand guards moving on, shall we? Yeah, I'm waiting on you. Uh, okay, so hand guards moving on. So I've got the actual HK quad rail. So, I mean, this would be the same quad rail that's used on 416s, that's, right? That's the OG um, from HK. The OG. I like, I like it. Some people suggested, like, you got to do the, uh, is it Remington? Yep. So it was. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't really dig yeah. the Remington hand guard. It's just me. Yep. Um, it's just, just throwback. Just, Remington just, Rand. Yeah. yeah, it's just not my thing. Um, so Geisley makes some really good options. Um, that's a great handguard. They've got their slimline, uh, you know, it's more M, or it is M lock underneath that, right? Yeah. 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 And then there's pick up um, front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you do have some different handguard options you can play around with. You'll notice both of these, um, obviously a, uh, a vert grip. Uh, mm -hmm. This one's from um, Ground Combat Solutions. Kev, who's yours from? MFT. Oh, okay, MFT. Yeah, MFT. Uh, one of the other things you'll notice, both these guns, uh, we have this camo form tape. Uh, hey, if those guys ever see the video, you should sponsor some videos. I really like your shit, because it's cheap, it's reusable, um, it, it deviates heat very well. Like, I gotta admit, I thought this stuff was just gonna be like, it looks cool, but it doesn't do shit. This stuff is fantastic at heat dissipation. Yeah. Because these rails get a little bit hot because there's not a lot of ventilation, especially on the quad rail. And just with the piston suppressor and everything, like handguard will get a little toasty after a while. And this thing does an excellent job at, at heat dissipation. Nice. Um, big fan. I wish I had some sort of, I genuinely wish I had some sort of code or something to give you guys. I do not. Um, so lights, I've got the Surefire Turbo on mine. Surefire finally getting back in the game with a uh, strong weapon light again. Uh, he's got PLH V2. Yep. Mod light. So. Solid, yep. solid light. Can't go wrong. Clicky cap. Oh, what the clicky cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Bonus points for that. Yeah. Uh, looking to the lowers here. So we both swapped out grips. Uh, I So so look, the, the grip that comes on the MR556 is nothing to write home about. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's like that rubber Magpul grip. Not a giant fan. Again, $20 part. You can swap out. No big deal. Pick your grip. Easy the to Wilson Combat, but BCM. Yeah. Yeah. And I've just got a, a B5. I swapped the safety on mine uh, to a Ford Controls. The factory safety is actually, first of all, it's Ambi. So for those of you who might be a lefty, yeah. it's really the only true, uh, that and a charging handle, or the only real lefty controls you ever need. Um, I swapped the safety just because I was down at trajectory hooking some stuff up, and I'm like, yeah, wh why not? But the factory safety is actually quite good. Yeah. Um, maybe you can talk about this because it's kind of an interesting feature, uh, James, which is the fact that, so these guns <laughs> will go unsafe regardless of empty chamber, bolt forward, bolt back, any of that. Right. Yeah, it's one of the features that h and is always looking to improve safety on mm -hmm. their firearms. And one of the challenges with the original AR um, platform weapons is you have to have the hammer cocked in order to put it on safe. And with the MR series, it doesn't matter what position the hammer is in, you can always put the weapon on safe. I like that. Which, I mean, it's just a nice feature, yeah. you know? Yeah. Why not? Why, Only why enables, not never that? disables, man. Yeah, there's yeah. no downside to that yeah. feature. No. Nope. Um, that's built, it's got to be, so that's built into the hammer trigger or something, right? Correct. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. once we swap drum. the safety, I was curious to see... Does this still work or is this a feature within the safety? Yep. It's not the safety, so you can swap the safety and maintain the And there's the feature. also a firing pin block safety in the bolt carrier group, um, which is not in your traditional AR-15. Nope. And that's doing what exactly? It is preventing drop safety related issues. So, ah, you know, okay. if I accidentally drop the weapon down, I don't have to worry about the firing pin overcoming the resistance of the firing pin spring and, and striking that primer in the chamber cartridge. It completely blocks its capability to do that. It's okay. awesome. Yeah. Okay. More cool. safety. Yeah. yeah, no, great. Um, both of us chose to swap out uh, charging handle. I think we both got radians. I got the yeah. I got the um, the SD one, the, the one to minimize the gas. Mm -hmm. Kevin's yeah. got the slimline one. Yep. You guys have these extended ones. They've got ambi controls. Mm -hmm. The standard MR uh, charging handle, obviously it's here on the left side for a right-handed shooter, um, but you can swap this mm -hmm. over that roll to the pin? other side just by rotating the roll pin out. So it's not something uh, yeah, I you have know that. to do, yeah. um, but you know, it's an option. No, it's a nice feature. I, I didn't know that. I thought it was just good to point out single side. So, um, 
pretty neat there. Optics, um, especially on a gun this short. Hey, look, it's really not meant for distance, so I'm just rocking an EOTech on a Unity riser. Sometimes I'll throw on a magnifier, but really there's no need to throw that weight on unless I'm punching past one, 150, something yeah. like that. And then our boy has a Hydra mount with his EOTech and then an NGAL. Yeah, so, money. Um, yeah. Both of us chose to swap the stock. stock. Um, that's just one of those, you know, dealer's choice. Preference. So the, the factory stock, the, the only, it's not an issue, it's just a reality of it. It is a bulky stock, yes. you know, it's just a beefy stock. This is, uh, you know, you got to look back from the time frame when the original HK416 was, was uh, released. There was a requirement for the ability to store additional batteries right. in those compartments. So if you remember like the Veltor stock was yep. really popular. So H&K created this uh, Echo One stock for that capability. Um, obviously you can trade it out. What you'll see the difference from the 416 variant to the MR series is on the 416 variant, the butt pad is a convex design because it's designed to roll up into the firing position. Whereas this is a match rifle, you see a concave design. But Sit if you wanted to change that, all you have to do is rotate this off by the other one, pop it on, and now you've got the other type of stock for an original HK416 build. Obviously mm -hmm. you've got the new uh, HK416 yeah. A5 slimline, slimline yeah. buttstock. A lot of guys go into that because they're looking for more of a minimalistic yeah. approach to the weapon. Yeah, be a, be aware of your stock choice in relation to sling attachment. Uh, on this stock, you would direct attach. I'm not a big direct attach sling guy, so one of the things we did when I sent the gun to you, we swapped the uh, end plate to a QD end plate. Nice. That way, Smart I just move. I clip in here, and then I run a snap hook here. I got a slide tactical sling. We've talked about them plenty, um, but basically, I'm running QD and snap hook. Um, so just be aware of that in relation to your stock. Um, yeah. You know, just different systems. Yeah, Kevin stock uh, Magpul, and then he has a custom-made cheek riser, but we got your QD slots in that, and then with this guy's Lee handguard built into the handguard. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yep, and just so you guys are uh, aware too, because again, you, you start going, hey, there's obviously proprietary shit in HKs. Um, the standard buffer tube that comes with the MR556 will also work with the slimline stock, so no issues can there, um, which can definitely be a question like, hey, am I yeah. gonna run into uh, stock compatibility uh, issues on that? No, you will not, you will be fine so in terms of like just kind of overall shooting experience i'd be frank with you guys i don't have as much time on my gun as i, I would like to uh feel like a, an expert on it but um we're kind of talking about it earlier like these things just feel like tanks when you get them and they are um i think that's the the main difference if you're not familiar with it and you're maybe you're at a carbine course and the guy down the line has an MR and you go to grab it and you're like, wow, this thing's, it's a lot heavier than my pencil thin BCM barrel gun. And there's a reason for that. Um, you know, it's based off the HK416 design, which specifically had requirements to make it last longer. Yep. You have long deployment cycles for these special operations guys who are dumping thousands of rounds before they ever leave country to go on deployment. Yep. That weapon needs to be able to last through that deployment and not have to be rebuilt and come back so, you know, we always joke that, you know, when a new contract requirement goes to H&K, the first thing the designers are going to say is, you know, how light does it have to be and how long does it have to last? And they're going to build it off from that. So hmm. it is definitely more robust overall um, mm -hmm. than a standard AR, but that's going to lead to the reliability and it's going to lead to the accuracy. So if you have a problem with that, well, you need to get in the gym and do a little bit more curls oh, um, for, the, for your workout. Throwing but, shade. Yeah, exactly. But... What I would say is, again, if you're looking to get an AR, you really have to ask yourself, what are you going to use it for? If all you're going to do is come out and you know shoot some targets, maybe once a month at the range, then any you know reliable manufacturer AR is going to do. Sure. If you want an AR that is going to be bomb proof, it's going to last and last. You can pass down to your grandkids. You don't have to worry about changing out of extractor springs every two thousand rounds. You'd be hard pressed to find one out of the box that's better than the MR556A1 and has that ability to really customize it the way you want to, which mm -hmm. is what's great about any kind of AR platform. Yeah, sure. it, it's, you know, I knew this was gonna be a beefy gun heading into it. A consideration is be aware of how much weight you're adding to the front of the gun. Yeah. I expected this to be a lot more front heavy than I think it is. Sure, it's a beefy gun, no doubt about it. Uh, but You've been lifting more. It's really, I have. I, I mean, I've really been hitting it hard See? for this because I don't want to show up and James is, is like looking like that and I'm showing up like a fat piece of shit over here. So, um, you know, 
Too much? That was a little aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, apologies to, to the <laughs> ladies that watch the show. I, you know, <laughs> no, 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 no problems around here. I just don't want to be a fat piece of shit, fellas. That's all I'm saying. So we'll move on. Um, it's a little, uh, yeah, it's beefy. It's not a big deal, man. Uh, it, like, it, don't make it out to be more than it is. Like, yeah, it's a it's a meaty gun. It's got that German, like, take a German car, you close the door, and there's that thunk to it. You know what I'm yep, talking about. I you're a German exactly car guy. Talking about. That thump to a German door. It's like this, this is like gun equivalent of that, where you're like, yeah, it's just, it's got that meat, you know? It's got that Bojangles meat. It does. Whatever the German equivalent of that is. Schnitzel. It yeah. does. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, it's what I would expect an AR from H&K to be. Solidly robust and reliable. Mm-hmm. And I would also note the trigger on these much better than I anticipated. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's very much in the category for me of, could you throw in a Geisley and say it's a better trigger? Yeah, I think you could. But is it is the trigger in the category of it warrants throwing any money to upgrade it? In my opinion, no. Yeah. It's completely acceptable. It's more than adequate for what virtually any of us are going to do. So it's like I wouldn't even touch the trigger, to be honest with you. Um, and I guess I'll just kind of end on, like, look, this is, I got like two ARs that were left in my bucket list. There's not many that, that, that interest me anymore. Now there's one. Um, and, and it's just like, that was one of my sort of bucket list AR, even though it's not an AR, AR, but not AR, AR kind of thing. It's like, that was really one of my bucket list guns where it's like, I really like the gun. Yeah. Yeah. And I've wanted it for a long time. And this is a great excuse for me to be reckless with money once again. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't have any kids, you know, so what's the difference? I don't have to send anyone to college, so who cares? You know? I mean, I'm in the will, so I get all this. Yeah. yeah. You, know you get the sling. You get the sling if something happens, <laughs> you know. Uh, the the gun, I, I I don't know. Maybe James. So we'll see how James does for the James rest of the day. James has plenty. Maybe James gets a gun. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how we're feeling. But um, anyway, that's that. All right, everyone. Final thanks for the day to FLP, which stands for? Firearms Legal Protection. Um, if you have firearms, uh, you should protect yourself. That seems to be a fairly obvious statement. Um, but whether you're a CCW uh, dude or lady, um, or you want to protect your home, or you have nunchucks that you carry around on you for worst case scenario, um, any of those things that are used in a legally justified self-defense scenario, they'll cover all the attorney fees. Um, the hotline, you get the attorney, not the customer service uh, folks that pick it up who are like, well, please hold, sir. We're going to need to look at I don't need you. To, I don't need No, to I need an attorney. I need the attorney, lady. Some yep. shit just went down with my nunchucks and I, I need to handle it. Our code will save you about a third off each package and yeah. that code's 1911. They have the single guy package that has nothing else but himself to worry about. I have the married traveling guy package. A couple different packages to suit your, your needs and your wants. So 1911, save you a couple bucks.